This is the popular E88 drone, one of the cheapest drone available in the market. And for its price, it comes with a remote controller, additional batteries, propellers. It has dual flight modes, altitude hold, and even cameras. Not just one, but two of them. And all of this is being sold at just Rs. 1500 in India. And it flies reasonably well for an entry-level drone. But what we wanted to know is how is this made possible? So for this price point, what is the flight controller used in the drone? What sensors are being used for the accelerometer, gyroscope and altitude hold? What kind of communication is taking place between the drone and the remote? And what kind of cameras and Wi-Fi module is used? The answer for all of that is in this video. Okay, so here is the E88 drone and its controller. Let's start from the controller. We'll have a basic look as you can see the controller is pretty simple with two joysticks. It has few buttons over here. These things are used to set the trim values. This is for taking off and landing automatically. This thing over here allows us to take picture and this one is for again controlling the trim settings. We also have two buttons here. One is for flip and another is speed control. On the back side, you can see the entire controller is powered with three double a cell batteries and then it just has one single pcb board inside and over here you can see a holder for mounting your mobile phone and then two antenna kind of stuff which is just for aesthetic purpose like we'll see later in the video and on the drone side over here most people would be familiar with this drone but again on a quicker look you can notice that there are four uh, normal dc motors which you can peek through over here and then we have two leds here one more led on the back side and then on the bottom you can see one camera over here and another camera on the front over here so this drone actually has two modules inside i'll explain all of that when we remove this now if we slide open here you can see the actual battery itself so let's start our tear down with this battery now on a closer look at the battery you can notice the capacity here is mentioned as 1200 mah so the battery also has a charging port over here and an indicator led to show if the battery is charged now if we pop open this battery this is what you will find inside so it's pretty simple it just has a lipo battery and a board connected to it so if you see here the lipo battery is pretty basic and the capacity here is mentioned as 1800 mah both of which are not true the actual capacity is less than 1000 mah which we tested using Using our DC load machine earlier. Taking a closer look at the board, you can see there are only a few components, all of which are marked over here. So on the back side, we have a normal LED, which is used to indicate the battery charging status. And on the front side, we have the micro USB cable, and then the battery slide connector, and then only one IC, which is the STC4054 single battery charging IC from ST Micro electronics now i'm not very sure if it is from st itself because for this cost it is most likely a clone but uh, the footprint and everything matches that of the stc 4054 ic so yeah the battery part is pretty simple now let's move on to the controller itself so we have already opened up everything and you can see this is the top part of the enclosure and there is just one single pcb inside it the pcb is very simple in fact it's a single layer board there are no tracks on the top on the bottom side we have all the tracks with just few ICs and an onboard antenna design now uh, before we come to the actual PCB let's take a quick look at the enclosure so the bottom part of the enclosure has the battery housing and there are two wires which carries the total power and connects to the PCB the top part of the enclosure looks something like this so all these buttons are actually connected to the single uh, mold piece that way they don't have to get each of these buttons uh, individually made and there are two independent joystick housings like this which will uh, get mounted onto the pcb and would appear like this now like i told you earlier uh, these antennas here are purely for aesthetic purpose in fact they just 
uh, pop into this place like this and it was not connected to any uh, circuitry whatsoever so these two flaps are purely for aesthetic purpose and even this thing is just a phone holder and it has no connection with the controller board whatsoever so taking a closer look at the board now on the top side you can see uh, just few uh, push buttons and two joystick modules like i told this thing was mounted uh, to the joystick module like this and for the front two buttons they have a vertical mount uh, push button an led indicator just to show the power status a slight switch for total on and off and a buzzer as a uh, audio feedback so nothing fancy on the top side just some joystick and push buttons i have mentioned uh, all the functions of the push buttons over here in case you want to know what exactly they are doing now on the bottom side we have a few ic's which are interesting now i have desoldered the ic's so that i can exactly know what those ic's are and even track the footprints okay so let's start from this section of the board you can see two ic's here one of which is a 3.3 volt voltage regulator and the other one is SS8050 switching transistor IC. So this is a generic NPN transistor which is uh, very popular and it is used in a lot of boards. Now coming to the main section of the IC you can see two important ICs which I have soldered out. The first one is a microcontroller which you can see over here. So this microcontroller is BS83B08C from a a manufacturer called Holtec. So it's a pretty basic 8-bit microcontroller with uh, ADC peripherals. So what this actually does is it reads the status of all these push buttons and the analog values from these two joysticks and also controls this buzzer. So this transistor here is actually used to drive the onboard buzzer which you can see here and it also reads the status of joystick and everything. So once these readings are read by this microcontroller, it has to transfer transmit it wirelessly to the drone and that is where this IC comes from. So this IC is called XN297LBW. So again I have uh, desoldered that IC as well. So this is a 2.4 gigahertz RF transceiver IC from a company called Panchip and this IC also needs a 48 megahertz crystal and an RF antenna to transmit its values and I have also desoldered this 48 megahertz RF crystal. So with this combination of uh, transceiver IC and the crystal oscillator the, the microcontroller sends the red values to the drone. So that is it on the joystick side there is nothing fancy here except for a microcontroller and an RF transceiver IC and also the onboard antenna design. So with a single side PCB they have just designed the antenna on the PCB itself. Now let's move to the actual drone itself. So we have already taken the drone apart and like I mentioned there are two important boards inside our drone. One is the actual uh, flight controller if I can call that as well as the motor driver and the other one is a separate board which controls both of the cameras. We'll get to this board later but for now let's take a look at our main board over here. Before we do that let me also quickly show you the uh, motor arrangements like I mentioned earlier it uses normal coreless DC motors for its thrust and I have also opened one of the motors so this is how it was so if you take a look inside uh, you can see the coreless DC motor clearly here along with a gear arrangement in the end and what they have used is a simple uh, gear like this which goes in like this so this motor actually drives this gear knob and over here they have actually mounted the propellers so nothing fancy here just a simple gear arrangement and normal coreless dc motors these motors are very cheap compared to that of your bldc motors and since it's a dc motor you don't need a fancy esc you can just drive it with a single mosfet so that is all with the motor side now let's get back to our main board over here now i have marked all the important parts of the board let's start 
start from this section and as you can see this section we already have some components which we are already familiar with so the xn29 lbw rf transceiver ic which we saw in our remote control over here so that same ic is obviously here because it's going to receive those signals and it also has that uh, 48 megahertz crystal so you can see that it had the main uh, rf transceiver ic here which i have removed and the crystal oscillator which is also removed and again the antenna for this ic can also be found over here apart from that you can find two switching transistors here again the same uh, generic npn transistor which is the ss8050 and then over here you can find uh, four uh, mosfets which are uh, p channel mosfets so the part number for these mosfet is si uh, 2300DS which I believe is an N-channel MOSFET sorry it's not a P-channel it's an N-channel MOSFET and most likely it's from Vaishe but I'm not sure it could also be a clone so these MOSFETs have a slightly higher drain current so it enables us to drive heavier loads like our DC motor which will consume uh, more than 2 amps for sure so apart from the motor drivers you can also see there is a 3.7 volt battery slider so this is the vertical mount slider which I have desoldered from the board and it slides in well with our uh, battery holder circuit which I showed earlier. So this board is fixed and when we slide in our battery these two makes contact. Apart from that we also have a Wi-Fi camera and uh, power and control signal. So this board over here is not directly connected to our Wi-Fi camera module. There are just three wires going out from here. So if you look at our Wi-Fi camera module, you can see there are just three wires. So like I mentioned, the controller board and the Wi-Fi camera board are completely separate. It's just connected by these connectors with these three wires. The red and black stands for power and the yellow is control signal. Now we'll get back to this again but now let's turn this uh, flight controller module and look at the other side where we have all the most important components now let's start from the top you can see the main microcontroller itself which is the stm32 f030 f4 p6 so this should be the microcontroller which handles all the firmware like uh, flight controller software and everything so again it's a very uh, cheap and popular microcontroller from ST microelectronics and we have a status LED on top now moving down we have the two important ICs again I have soldered out one of them but you can see them here so one IC is the BMP 180 barometric pressure sensor from Bosch so this sensor measures the altitude of the drone and helps us to fly it in altitude hold mode the other important IC here is the L3 GD 20 H 3 axis gyroscope sensor we have removed the sensor to see the traces and figure out the exact part number so this sensor is from st microelectronics and this is the most important sensor which measures the pitch roll and yaw of the drone and helps us to fly it stably now we have one push button here which goes on uh, to connect with this main power button so if you press this power button this button gets pressed and then moving down further you can see we have a p channel mosfet which is si2301 now this p channel mosfet is probably there for reverse polarity protection and we have one more voltage regulator which is xc6206 p282mr which is a 2.8 volt voltage regulator so those are the most important components apart from that you can see these terminals here which were actually connected to the four motors. You can see one, two, three, four, four sets of uh, positive and negative for the four motors and then uh, LED positive and negative for the LED lights which were placed in front of the drone. So yeah, that is all with the main flight controller module. The front side has the microcontroller and the most important sensors and the back side has the motor driver section and the RF control circuit and two transistors to decide which part of the circuitry should be active at what time to conserve energy. I'll tell you what exactly they do later. Now moving on, we have one more fascinating module which is the camera module. So let's take a look at that. So the E88 drone has two batteries, one at 
the front which is this one and the other one is on the back and you can also see the uh, wi-fi camera antenna projecting like this over here now this is the module which actually gets the job done so this single module is capable of handling two cameras you can see the front camera over here and the back camera mounted on the other side so there is just one ic on top of the board and one crystal oscillator which is a 40 megahertz crystal oscillator and of course a 3.3 volt uh, voltage regulator and this wi-fi camera ic is called lw9809 now i'm not sure if the ic is called this or the complete module is called like that and this ic is from a chinese manufacturer called uh, shenzhen live innovation so i didn't find much details about this module but uh, the other two cameras over here are used with a lot of uh, wi-fi drones so one is a gc0309 which is a 640 cross 480 megapixel uh, camera and the other one is the bf3082 which is a 320 cross 240 camera so yeah there is nothing much to do here it's just the module that's handling everything and i believe even the firmware is already loaded into this ic all you have to do is uh, power this module and then there is one uh, control signal so these two wires handle uh, power from the lipo battery directly and there is this one control wire which is directly connected to our stm32 microcontroller based on what command we send through this wire so this ic will either record a video and uh, stream it to the phone or even click pictures so the flight controller module here just sends control commands to control this wi-fi camera module and these two are not actually uh, a single the PCB together. Now to summarize things, let's take a quick look at this uh, flow diagram. So we have just figured out what each of these ICs are doing. So yeah, once the battery is connected to our flight controller module, we have a P-channel MOSFET, which I showed you earlier. So this MOSFET is going to make sure there is no reverse polarity problem. And then it's going to regulate 2.8 volt using the onboard LDO. And it boots up the STM32 microcontroller and puts it in sleep mode. Now it is waiting for us to press this button. Once we press this button, it's going to wake up the microcontroller and it is gonna use these two transistors on the back which is the SS8058 transistors to power up uh, the RF circuitry and also to power up the camera module. So since we don't want the power to be wasted the RF circuitry and camera module will be powered only when we press this button through the microcontroller. And then it starts sensor calibration and then it calibrates both the gyroscope sensor as well as the barometer sensor and then once the calibration is completed it's gonna show some indication LED and it is going to wait for the controller to pair. Now, if you remember our RF control remote, there is nothing like uh, setting address or anything like that. It's just two same ICs working on the same frequency. So any remote could pair with any flight controller. Once the pairing is done, it's going to wait for the joystick calibration and then it's armed and ready for us to fly. So yeah, uh, the drone looks very complicated, but when you look at the circuitry, everything is plain and simple and easy to understand. Stand. so that is it guys hope you enjoyed watching the video and learned something useful if yes do consider subscribing to our channel and also let us know in the comment section what tear down we should do next that being said this is ashwin from circuit digest have a great day tata bye bye